Great, great song to be able to start off our stewardship teaching it. And I hope that's the prayer of all of us here uh, at Crossroads Baptist Church. First Corinthians chapter number four. If you'll stand with me for the reading of the word of God. First Corinthians uh, chapter four. I like to begin reading in verse number one. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Our Father, we thank you so much for the wonderful privilege we have to gather together, to be able to uh, study and learn from God's holy word. We thank you for the local church. We thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for the pastor you've given us. We ask your blessing as he preaches tonight and I pray that you'll bless every man woman boy and girl who's here tonight those who might be watching online and I pray you'll challenge us tonight and the next several weeks of the importance of stewardship and what it means to you and help it to mean something to each of us now I pray you'll take me as your servant tonight I certainly need your help I need your strength I pray first of all you cleanse me of any sin Empty me of self and fill me with thine Holy Spirit. I pray you'll direct and guide all that is said in the time that we have here tonight, and we'll thank you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for standing. As mentioned, beginning tonight and the next three more Wednesday nights, we're going to be uh, spending some time studying what the Bible says about Christian stewardship, uh, Christian stewardship. The Bible tells us in our text that it is required of stewards to be uh, faithful. Now, there, I was thinking throughout the day and some other times as I get older, there are a lot of things about getting old that you have challenges, challenges. Uh, sometimes you have pain and you have discomfort and all kinds of things that happen and sometimes you don't always rejoice at getting old. I've been playing a little golf here recently. I hadn't played golf in the, in the last seven years because of surgery and uh, I found out that at 77 I don't hit the ball as well as I did at 47 or 57. So uh, that part of getting old is not, is not fun. But there are a lot, there's some things about getting old that you can look at and you can rejoice. And one of the things that I enjoy about getting old is you can look back. You look back and uh, you find some things that are interesting and, and exciting. One of the things that I, I get excited about, when I started preaching uh, 50 years ago, uh, whenever that was, uh, I, I preached the Bible based on what the Bible said because I believed it, but now I can preach the Bible because I still believe it and I have lived it. And let me tell you something, when you read the Bible, you believe it, but then when you live it and then you, uh, you look back after 47 years of being a Christian and you find out, boy, that's exactly what God said. Uh, there are a lot of things that I am still learning about this Christian life. I work on every single day. Well, there's one thing that I learned shortly after getting saved, maybe three weeks or so, the importance of doing everything that I could do to be what this passage tells us about being a steward for Almighty God. I am a Christian steward. Let's look at what, what the apostle says here. He talked about the fact that he was a minister. That means he was a, a servant of Jesus Christ. Paul learned that when he got saved on the Damascus Road. He learned the importance that what I have here is so wonderful and so great 
that the rest of my life I want to be a bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, God has entrusted me with the, these mysteries. The secrets of God had been entrusted to Paul and the apostles. And he says, I want to be a, a steward. A steward is simply one who manages the household of another. In other words, if a steward is one who owns absolutely nothing but manages everything in his possession for someone else. So let me make sure we understand that. When you got saved, you became a steward. And at that moment in life, we have a responsibility of managing everything God has allowed us to have. That includes my time. My time is not mine. I'm managing it for God. He saved my soul, left me down here on earth, and I'm to manage how I use that time for him. I'm a, I'm a steward. I, 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 I have a, a, a responsibility of taking extreme care in how I manage my time for God. Every Christian here has at least one gift or one talent. We have a responsibility to manage that talent, manage that gift for Almighty God. Every Christian here has treasure that we are responsible for managing it for God. It's not mine. It belongs to Almighty God. So the apostle says here, uh, let every man account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse number two. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man or a woman or a young person be found faithful. Now, in this world in which we live in, there are a lot of people that require a lot of things out of us that may be impressive. In other words, some people require us to be clever. Some people require us to be talented. Some people require us to get wealth. Some people require us to be successful. That's impressive from a human perspective. But God says, as a steward, I require one thing, that you be found faithful. You be found faithful. You be found a good manager of everything I'm going to allow you to guard and manage for me while I live you down here, leave you down here on earth. Now look at the attitude that Paul had toward that. Here's a man that used to chase Christians down and put him in jail. But he got saved and he realized I'm a steward. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Everything that I have, I want to be faithful in managing it for almighty God. So here's, here's what he said. He's writing to the church of Corinth, a church that he loved dearly. It's been 18 months. Pastor has preached through the book of 1 Corinthians. He's talking to this church that he loved dearly, that knew him, and he knew them. He said in verse number three, but with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Hey, I love you, Corinth, and I want to do the best that I can for you. I poured my life into you, but I want to tell you something. When it comes to this stewardship, I'm not trying to impress you. I'm not really concerned about what you think of my stewardship. He goes on to say, but with me is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. I don't care what everybody else thinks about my stewardship. I know what I am. I know what my responsibility. There's a requirement to be faithful, and my response ought to be, I'm going to do everything I can to be faithful. So I don't care what the Corinthians think and what you think of my stewardship. I don't care what others 
think about my stewardship. He goes on in verse number three. Yea, I judge not mine own self. As a matter of fact, I'm not concerned about what I think about me. After all, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. And sometimes what we think of us is not the same thing that God knows about us. So he says, I'm not concerned about the, what the Corinthians think. I'm not concerned about what others think. I don't even care about what I think about my stewardship. Verse number four. For I know nothing by myself. I, 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 don't, I, I can't think of anything if I think about myself and what I'm doing. I, I can't find anything that I'm really not doing that I should be doing as a steward. Then he goes on and say, yet am I not hereby justified? I don't, I don't trust what I don't see in me. Here's what really matters. But, be, but he that judges me is the Lord. Here's what I want to begin with stewardship. I want to begin with the, begin with the idea of it's required of a steward that a man, woman, boy, or girl be found faithful, not based on what Crossroads thinks about you, what others think about you, but what God knows about you. When you get that in your mind, you get that in your heart, then we ought to put forth every effort we have in every situation as a man, woman, boy, or girl to be found faithful. Why? God is the one who's going to judge me. God is the one who's entrusted me. God is the one who gave me the time here on earth. God is the one who gave me a talent. God is the one who gives me treasure. God is the one who gives me a job. God is the one who gives me children. God is the one who gives me a church. And one day, he's going to judge my guardianship, how I handle my time, how I handle my treasure, how I raise my children, because I'm just a steward. And as a steward, who's going to be judged by God, I want to be found faithful. Forty-some years ago, that meant something to me. That meant something as a 30-year-old man saved by the grace of God who was in business, who had a family, had a job, had these things. I realized all of a sudden I've been saved by the grace of God and now I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ and I want to be the best steward that I can be for Almighty God. I don't have time to talk about all the things that I started doing right away as a businessman and started doing right away as a father because I knew one day, one day, someone was going to judge me, judge me who saw things that my employees didn't see, saw things that my preacher and pastor didn't see, but God saw every single one of them, and I wanted to be faithful. So stewardship begins with a principle that if there's a requirement that comes from God, there ought to be a response of action that comes from me. It is required in every steward to be found faithful. Now, since that is, whether we accept it, whether we believe it, whether we behave that way, doesn't change the fact that the God in heaven requires his stewards to be found not wealthy, not smart, not everything the world is looking at, but to be found faithful. So I want to begin by giving us some principles, three principles of stewardship with this thought in mind. These principles.
principles will help me to be faithful in my stewardship. You're a steward. You may not be a good one, or you may be a so-so one, but every saved person is a steward. And while I'm thinking about it, from a human perspective, we sometimes sanction how great stewards are. But let me tell you something. The only good stewards that I know are the ones that are in our church. Well, they even smile. They don't even think that. They're like, they already got this thing down like, like in their heart. I can't think that about me. I don't know. But we're stewards. We're, we're stewards. And we ought to be faithful as we can in what God sees in our hearts. So here are the, here are the principles. Principle number one of good Christian stewardship is accountability. Accountability. Now, I've, I've, I've done all of this to get us to understand that God requires us to be faithful in our time, our talent, and our treasure. All right? That, there's, there's, everything, all of it belongs to God. He requires that. He requires me to be faithful. Therefore, God, I'm, I, I'm flat. I have a hard time in this, this world. The things that are happening all the time. What principle can help me to be faithful? All right, let's, let, let, let's, as pastors say, let's, God requires a steward to be what? Faithful. All right? I, I, I've got that in my head, hopefully in my heart. That's a requirement from Almighty God. Now, here's my response. I want to do that. I need to do that. That's required of me. I want to respond in a way that I do that. Here's something that will help. First of all, if I'm going to be faithful, I've got to understand there's an accountability when it comes to my stewardship. And I want to illustrate that from turning back to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. The first principle of stewardship that will help me to be faithful is to understand in stewardship there's an accountability. Here's where it begins. Deuteronomy chapter 8, beginning in verse number 11. Now, follow along here and at the same time, think about what is being said to God's people. Beware, verse number 11, that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his, statu his judgments and his statues, which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein. Let me pause for a second. Here we find God's people coming out of Israel. They're going from bondage to blessings. When they get in God's promised land, they're going to find two things. They're going to find prosperity, but they also are going to face problems. Doesn't that sound like the Christian life? You start getting something out of life, you start facing problems. And the whole context here is whether you find prosperity or whether you face problems, you still need to understand it's required in a steward to be found Faithful, Verse number 13. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up. Thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of of bondage. Verse number 15. Who led thee 
through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of the flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which they, thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do the good at thy latter end. And then he says, verse 17, and thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. Verse 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. He says, Israel, when you go into the promised land and all of a sudden you're blessed, you find prosperity, you find gold, and you find silver, you find land, be careful, remember the Lord thy God. It is thee who gives you the power to get whatever you have. He was telling them, you better remember something. There's an accountability to what you are going to receive, the blessings. It's going to come from me. Make sure that you don't ever get to the point in your life where all of a sudden you forget the Lord thy God and you're talking about, look at what I have got in life. Look at what my education has given me. Look at what my hard work has given me. God says, you better remember the Lord thy God. Remember who you belong to. Remember who brought you there. Remember who has blessed you. There's an accountability as to how you handle what I have allowed you to have and never get to the point in your life where you start talking about, look what I've done. Look what I have accomplished. If I'm going to be faithful in my stewardship, no matter what my situation is, will I find prosperity, a good job, have a good family, have a good bank account, have a good church, have all of these things in life? Let's never forget where they came from. The day I got saved, I became a steward. And I am only managing it. I, I'm a, a guardian. I'm watching over what God has allowed me to manage for him. And by the way, we'll see during this time, sometimes God allows some people to manage more than he does other people because when they had a little bit, they managed that well. And God says, you're ready to have some more to manage. But we're, we're in the managing business, whether we have a little job, a big job. We have a little amount or a large amount. Whether we have a big family or a smaller family. All I'm doing is managing. What God's looking for in my management, that I'm faithful, that I'm faithful. So since there's accountability, and my desire as a steward is to be faithful. How do I live when I know there's an accountability as to how I manage? Two thoughts. Accountability, here's something will help you to live accountable to God. First of all, here's this thought. God owns everything. Say that. God owns everything. Listen to what the psalmist said. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein in Psalm 24. That means the earth is the Lord. Leviticus 25, 23 says, the land is mine. Psalm 50 verse 10 says, every beast and the cattle of a thousand hills. Haggai, where pastor's been preaching through on Sunday mornings, the silver and the gold 
is mine. God owns everything. He owns my bank account. He owns everything that I have. It all belongs to him. We are accountable to God for how we use it. God is the one who has provided everything that I have, and if I'm going to live my life to be faithful as a steward, I've got to understand there's accountability. The accountability, but, but not just accountability for this part of my life or this part of my life, all of my life, I'm going to have to be accountable to God as to how I manage it. So accountability, if every day of my life when I go to work, when I raise my children, when I work at church, if I understand there's an accountability of how I manage time, talent, and treasure, that means I won't take life and put it in categories. You know, okay, God, uh, I, I, I'll do well here, but uh, not so well here. No, 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 no. God owns everything, every single thing, all of my time, every talent, all of my treasure. And he left me here down on earth to manage it for him. What is he looking for? Not a pat on the back. Not to be praised how successful you are in life. Not how great of a businessman you may be. Not even how great of a preacher that people think you are. But God want to say, are you faithful? Are you faithful? Are you ready for this accountability that you're going to face someday in how you manage? God owns everything. Helps me to be accountable. Now, if that's not enough, here's something else. God not only owns everything, but God owns us. Oh, hello. Ezekiel 18.4 says this way, all souls are mine. Romans 14.8 says this, we are the Lord's. 1 Corinthians 16, 19 and 20, these are the first two verses I learned when I got saved. Ye are not your own, but ye are bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So God says, your body belongs to me. You ever thought about the fact how we carry ourselves determines how good of a steward I am of what belongs to God? Our bodies belong to him. That's the temple he saw fit to let me live here on earth to be a steward for him. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. We are his. I need to carry myself like I belong to him. I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. Am I managing that in the right way? We need to understand that. That's principle living, not feeling living, not what the world is doing living. That's what a steward who understands the importance of being faithful of what belongs to God. God owns everything, owns my house, owns my car, owns my clothes, owns my children, owns the church. It all belongs to him. I'm just a steward that he has entrusted based upon what he knows about me, based upon what he sees, based upon the fact that I live like a man, woman, or boy who understands that one day, one day, I'm going to have to give an account, not to the pastor, not to people around me, not to people on earth, but the God who's all-knowing, all seeing, who knows all, sees all, keeps all. And all he's looking for is not how well I sang, how well I preached, how big my bank account is. He's looking for one thing. How faithful have you been as a manager, a guardian, 
of that which belong to me. Paul says, I put it, he put it this way. I'm a steward. I don't own anything. The day he met me on the Damascus Road and saved my soul, I became a bond servant of Jesus Christ. You read Romans chapter 7, he talks about when he wanted to do something, and Paul knew the kind of problems he had. He knew within himself he could do none of those things. So he became what I believe every Christian needs to become, a principal person. This book never leads anybody wrong. I am so glad that after 47 years of being saved, I haven't found one thing in here that I've ever done from this book that led me astray. I, I'm glad. I, look, look, I would not want to be living in this crazy world in which I'm living now where I have to find myself on my face before Almighty God and got to go through a long confession all the time about how lousy my stewardship is when I need to ask him to help me to do something I can't figure out myself. So the best way to do that, put your feelings aside, develop some principles, and learn that because I'm a steward, it's required. It's required of me as a steward, which I admit that I am, to be found faithful. I need some help. How about living every day with this thought in mind? I'm accountable. There's an accountability for my stewardship that God is going to hold me responsible for because he owns everything in my possession. And he owns me. And I'm going to do everything that I can to at least when he judges me to be found faithful in how I manage my time my talent, my treasure for Almighty God. I was supposed to do three principles and maybe it's part of getting older. You know, that you just, it just things seem to go fast and some things seem to go slow. And I haven't figured out yet, but um, now I got to really, really speed up because next week I got to get finish the other two, and then talk about the spirit of stewardship. So you're going to have to help me uh, so I won't have to uh, review everything next week, and uh, we'll get through this. I hope you'll, you'll uh, take these thoughts and, and work on them, ponder on them. Uh, another thing about getting old and living, not old, I'm not old. Bert's the one that's getting old. He turned 70 today. Happy birthday. Wonderful. That's a good age. I know they're going to show it on the screen, but we go back a long way because I remember when you were a whole lot younger than 70. <laughs> but it's so, and I see, I forgot what I was going to say. But anyway, and I don't have it. Mine is not a COVID excuse, okay? It's just a getting old excuse. But anyway, I'm glad, I'm glad that there are principles to live by. And I hope we'll put some in, in, uh, in practice and be good stewards because God has certainly been good to give us things to manage. We have a wonderful, wonderful church family and uh, so many wonderful friends and so many things that we have. And may God help us to understand that we're going to be accountable, not for all the gifts and talents and everything, but how faithful we've been. Our Father, we thank you again for the time that we've had together. I pray you'll help during these next three weeks uh, uh, to be able to help me. There's so much that could be said and so little time to say it all. So I pray that you'll help it to be uh, structured, that people will understand 
grasp and begin to do these principles that I trust will make a difference. We're all going to stand before you someday. Help us to please understand that as stewards, you require every steward to be faithful. Help us to live with accountability that you own everything and you own us. And make that be a principle that will help us to desire to be faithful. Are you blessed? Uh, now, all that we do, may we leave here tonight more determined to be better stewards, more faithful, and we'll thank you for it. In Christ's name we pray, amen.